uh, way that it works for them and they're not having any issues. Um, that's just the way it works. So just, just be aware that that's one of the reasons. Another reason that you have a bunch of different credit uh, scores because people are diff using different uh, models that um, calculate your score a little bit differently. Um, so how do you know which model a lender, like I just discussed, just uh, explained, is using? You don't. You don't don't know unfortunately not many people on the front lines of whoever you use to finance your furniture your car a personal loan etc they don't know what version of fico their company is using so actually i um i had a little back and forth uh this week with a listener um that asked his lender because we talked about this last week uh, Access lender, what version of FICO do they use? And the answer they got back was Equifax. Well, that's not the same thing. Not the same thing at all. When I ask you what version of FICO you're using, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's the version of it. What the person answered on the other end was which credit bureau they use to evaluate your credit so they use equifax they could have said transunion or they could have said experian but this particular place uses equifax it's not the same thing not at all not even close it's two different entities so maybe even that particular person with whoever that lender was doesn't understand the nuance or the difference between fico and the credit bureaus they're not the same thing so like i said you, you have to be careful and you just sometimes you just don't know you don't know what the other people don't know on the other line and who you're getting the information from all right so if you ever run into a situation you run into a situation and it's dealing with your credit if it's dealing with collections or whatever it is and you are not sure that that person knows what they're talking about and, and let me tell you this though people that work in these institutions and do this every day whether it's a personal loan place, a bank, or whatever, they they don't always know what they don't know. They don't always know that they don't know some things, all right? Some people are keenly aware of it, but a lot of people don't admit that they don't particularly know what the nuances are when it comes to credit. There are a lot of people out there that, are, that have approval ability to say yay or nay to your loan, yay or nay to your application, and they couldn't get credit themselves. All right. So when you're going to have an issue, when you got questions or whatever, contact me. Somebody contacted me this week and said, um, because of some information that I give out or my particular stance on something and they did like the opposite. They didn't want to contact me and ask questions and have this discussion. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not saying take all of my advice. And this person might have took, you know, did what they did prior to finding the show and whatnot. And I think that they did. However, there's no judgment here. This is a no judgment zone. Come to me with your questions or whatever. We're going to talk about it and we're going to hash it out and see if we can do what's best for you and your credit. All right. So I think that was number two. That was only number two. All right. So number three, 18 minutes in, we're only, only on number two. It's not going to be a long show. I'm going to get y'all out of here. So number three, credit card balances. Credit card balances. So one strategy held by... Um, Let's see, let's call them uh, credit gurus and, and others is to keep a balance on your credit cards to help your credit score. That only helps the bank that you owe because you're going to have to pay them interest. You do not need to keep a balance on a credit card. Let me read that again. And let me say that again. You do not need to keep a balance on a credit card. All right. So. That doesn't help your credit score. You know, keeping that little small amount on your credit score, um, it doesn't it doesn't help. You don't need that to keep your credit score going or maintain it or what have you. You don't need to do that. Now, I will say this. It's not bad if you have a nominal, a small amount of credit on a credit card, as long as it doesn't critically impact your credit utilization so if you have a low credit utilization and it's at 
three, four, five percent, something of that nature. You know, keep a little balance on there, but you don't have to. You don't have to do that to help with your credit score. So you do not have to keep a uh, balance at all on there. It's not necessary to do so. And um, so with that being said, periodically, though, you would like to use your card periodically. So that doesn't mean you can use it every three months. You can use it every six months or whatever. What you don't want to do is that let them close your card because of inactivity. You don't want them closing your card because of inactivity. So you can absolutely use that card here and there, but it's not necessary to help you with your credit score. It's not necessary to help you with your credit score. All right. You're using it for other reasons or whatever. That's, you know, that's on you. It's perfectly fine. Use your card if you need to. Use your card if you feel like it. You left your wallet at home, but you got this credit card with you. Boom, use your card. But you don't have to hold a balance on your credit cards to help with your credit scores. And some people are under that impression um, for whatever reason. And it's just not the case. You don't have to do so um, at all. Um, when it comes to your credit cards, the thing you want to look out most for is uh, that credit utilization. That credit utilization, you're keeping it under 30%, under 10% is even better. If you can keep it there. If you can keep it there, that's going to help your credit. That's going to help your credit way more than keeping five, ten dollars on a credit card that you don't need to, you don't necessarily need to do. So, know that that's the case, right? Number four, the fourth thing we're talking about: collection agencies. Let's get back to the collection agents, collections again, and let's specifically talk about collection agencies. There's a long-standing theory floating around that you don't have to pay a collection agency because you never did business with them you hear me so people think that and people tout this all the time all over the internet and articles and stuff like that that you don't have to pay a collection agency or a collection like we would commonly call it a collection because you didn't do business with them so listen to this what's the phrase that i always say what's my phrase oh i don't know you so i don't owe you so that's how people look at that. I don't know you, so I don't owe you. That is dead wrong. It's just dead wrong. People that say this, well, the reason that people say this is you don't have to pay. Um, you don't have to pay those, you know, collection agencies. Speak as if collection agencies are a scam industry. Now, although we may not like them, we may not. We may think that they are a pest. Um. And we may think that they're underhanded. Uh, doesn't mean that they are I illegitimate or illegal. If they were illegal, there wouldn't be laws out here to regulate them. So regulations like they can't call you after 9 p.m. They can't call you before 8 a.m. Um, that they can't contact you by phone if you tell them, don't contact me by phone anymore. You know, et cetera, et cetera. So all of those regulations that have come about for this industry because it's an illegitimate industry so they are real for sure um but the people that have that mindset is that you know i don't i don't owe you because uh I, I didn't make a contract with you and i didn't borrow money from you or whatever it is that's just simply wrong let's think about it like this let me ask you a question you ever see a mob movie you ever see a mob movie so did you, you ever see jimmy the nose uh buy a debt from Frankie the Worm. Who's ever debt, who's ever debt that Jimmy bought, now that person owes Jimmy. Now I'm not saying, and I'm not trying to uh, equate a collection agency to, a, to the mob, but maybe you understand it a little bit better if you think about it in those ways. So yeah, Jimmy the Nose, he bought his debt from you know Frankie the Worm, and now whoever that person is, say it's me now i owe jimmy and i don't owe frankie anymore that's kind of like a collection agency that's kind of how they do doesn't matter to you or it shouldn't matter to you um what the deal was between jimmy and frankie you know you you owed uh frankie you know a thousand bucks uh jimmy paid 200 bucks to get this to get this debt and now he's collecting or trying to collect that whole thousand from you that that's the way it works that's how a collection agency works so Let's get off the mob. Let's get off the mob. Let's talk about, um, a, you know, a regular place. That theory, that theory that you don't owe that person, 
is the same theory that people could use then to get out of paying their mortgage, let's say. So let's say you closed on your mortgage, nothing wrong with it, not in collections or anything of that nature, right? But the theory was that you don't have a relationship. You never signed a contract with that collection agency, right? But let's just say you, you got a mortgage. You got your mortgage through Chase Bank. Now that you have your mortgage through Chase Bank and Bank of America comes along, Bank of America comes along and they buy your mortgage from Chase Bank. Are you trying to tell me under your theory, under this particular theory that you don't owe them? I don't know you, so I don't owe you. So under that theory, now you're trying to say that you got a free and clear home now and you don't have to pay Bank of America because that's not who you made your contract with. You've never set foot in a Bank of America in your life. So you're saying that you got a free and clear home. You don't have to make payments anymore. Of course not. Of course not. So that blows that theory in my mind blows that theory out of the water because that's not the way it works it's just not the way it works you had a transfer your stuff transferred from one place to another place happens all the time in business happens all the time in business individual accounts and sometimes even whole companies right get ate up by another company that doesn't mean that you don't owe anymore because some business transactions went went, went around it doesn't mean that. So you just got to make sure that you know those things. Now, here's a tip, though. Here's a tip when it comes to dealing with something like this and collection agencies. When collection agencies do these bulk deals, sometimes things fall through the crack. Sometimes, right? So sometimes they don't get all the necessary documents that it takes to collect on your debt. So when you get something from a quote-unquote new-to-you agency, Ask for the documentation to be sent to you. Original contract you sign, well, they're not going to send an original, but the copy of the original contract that you sign and everything else in between. If they can't produce it, then you have grounds to have it removed from your credit report and you might get out of that debt. You might get out of that collection that was that was uh that was gonna happen against you, all right? So that's a tip that you can do, especially when it's somebody new. Some of you have had the same debt transferred three, four, five, six times to different um agencies. Almost if I had to guess, if I had to guess, if it's the fourth time it's been transferred somewhere then it's probably only about a, a 10 to 15% chance that they actually have all of the documentation that they need to collect that debt from you. So you make sure you make that call and see what's up. Number five, so we can get out of here. Number five, tax liens. Did you know that tax liens, along with judgments, are no longer reported to your credit report? People still think that it's supposed to be on your credit report. Yep, that's right. No longer tax lien, no longer judgments go on your credit report. So your old landlord can threaten to... uh. Uh, ruin your credit all you want um, by putting a judgment on your credit report. Not going to happen. So, that, that matter of fact, landlords are not even doing the whole judgment thing like they used to um, because part of it was punishment and putting it on your credit report to hurt you from getting another place. Um, now, oftentimes, they're just going to collections for them and letting a collection agency report um, uh, collect from you uh, for the amount that they say that you owe instead of seeking um, you know, total judgments and things of that nature. So, Yes, that's right. They're not supposed to be on it anymore. Not state taxes, not federal taxes. They're not supposed to be on your credit report anymore. Um, this change was, uh, you know, of course, not liked by the banks and lending institutions. And I kind of see their argument. I see their argument, you know, it's just helpful for them to know all of your debts. You know, they didn't know who, every, you know, who, you, who do you owe um, altogether. So it is helpful for them. And uh, without these, you know, being on your credit report, if you don't disclose it, on your credit applications, you know, they can't decide the true risk of lending you money. So I see their point when it comes to that, but it's good for us um, because they have those, to have those negative items um, on your credit report would drag down your credit score, of course. So um, the higher the score, the lower the interest rates you pay, um, right? So since that's the case, it's good for us, which means the banks, you know, they just can't justify Ch uh, charging you more interest, you know, because a lot of people got a benefit from that not being on their credit report anymore. And um, 
So if you still have tax liens or you got judgments on your credit report, please, please contact me. Um, I can help you get them removed. 800 at creditscoreman.com. Um,